Hey everyone, in this video, we'll be modeling a sleek perfume bottle from scratch in Blender. This is part one of a two-part series where we'll focus on the full modeling process. By the end, you'll have a clean model ready for texturing in part two. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, let's select everything in the scene. To do this, press A. This will select all the objects in your 3D viewport. Now hit X to delete everything. As usual, I'll enable the screencast keys so you can see any button I press pop up in the bottom left corner here. Now for our perfume bottle, we're going to start with a cube. To add a new mesh, press Shift A. This opens the Add menu where you can choose different objects to add to your scene. Select Cube from the menu. Next, we need to enter Edit Mode to modify the cube. Press Tab to switch to Edit Mode. You'll know you're in Edit Mode when you see the edges and faces of the object. Now let's scale the cube along the z-axis to give it height. To do this, press S to activate the Scale tool, then press Z. This constrains the scaling action to the z-axis, allowing you to stretch the cube vertically. We also want to scale it along the y-axis a bit to give it some width, so press S again, followed by Y. This will scale the cube along the y-axis. Adjust it until you have a shape that looks good. Next, let's scale it down a little more to refine its shape. Press S and then Z to make the cube shorter along the Z-axis. Now we'll add a loop cut to give it more detail. Press Ctrl R. This shortcut allows you to add edge loops, which can help define the shape of your model. When you do this, you'll see a pink outline indicating where the loop cut will go. Scroll your mouse wheel to add three segments. Now switch to edge select mode by pressing two on your keyboard. You can also click the edge select icon in the toolbar. Select the top edge of the bottle by clicking it, then hold Shift and select the opposite edge as well. Holding Shift allows you to select multiple edges without deselecting the first one. Next, make sure you turn on the proportional editing tool by pressing O. This tool allows you to influence surrounding geometry when you scale or move an edge. In the drop-down menu, ensure connected only is checked, which means only the edges connected to your selected edges will be affected. Now. Press S and then X to scale these edges along the X axis. You can scroll your mouse wheel to adjust the area of influence, which controls how much of the surrounding geometry will be affected by the scaling action. Once you're happy with how that looks, turn off proportional editing by pressing O again. Let's scale it down a tiny bit more. Press S and then XX again to make those adjustments. Finally, let's add a few more segments for detail. Press Ctrl R again to add more loop cuts and scroll your mouse wheel to adjust the number of segments. Do the same for the horizontal parts as well. All right, next let's select these faces. Hold Shift and then click on the faces you want to select. If you want to select a long edge loop, you can hold Ctrl while clicking to select it all at once, just like this. Now, press I to insert the selected faces inward. To see through the geometry and make selection easier, press Alt-Z to enter X-ray mode. This allows you to see the inside of your mesh. Next, press E to extrude along the Z-axis. Uh, this will extend the selected faces upward. Then press S to scale it down a bit to refine the shape. Now press S again and then Y to scale it along the Y axis, adjusting the profile to your liking. Now let's insert again. Press I one more time to create another inset. After that, hit Delete to remove all the faces that are selected. Switching to Edge Select mode, hold Alt and select this edge loop here. Now press Ctrl F to bring up the Face menu and choose Grid Fill. This fills the selected area with a grid of faces, creating a smooth transition. Next, let's repeat this process for the top parts. Switch back to Face Select mode and select the faces at the top. Right-click, then under the Loop menu, choose Circle. If you don't see this option, go to Edit, then Preferences, and under Add-ons, search for Loop Tools and make sure it's enabled. Now that you have the top face selected, press S to scale it up a bit. This will give the top of the bottle a more elegant shape. Next, press E 
again to extrude along the z-axis, pulling it up just like this. Once again, hit delete to remove the faces at the very top. Now let's switch back to object mode. To give our bottle some smoothness, let's add a bevel modifier. Go to the modifiers tab, click on add modifier, and choose bevel. Adjust the angle to 45 degrees to create a softer edge on the bottle. Next, let's add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out our model. To do this, go to the modifiers tab and select add modifier. Then choose subdivision surface. Change the viewport levels to two, just like this. Now let's tab back into edit mode. Press Ctrl R to add a loop cut here. And again, press Ctrl R to add another loop cut further down to make this side a bit sharper. Now press A to select everything. Then hit Shift D to, to duplicate the entire selection. Right click to snap it back into place, maintaining the same position as the original. Next, hit Alt Z to enter X-ray mode, which allows us to see through our geometry. With the duplicated object selected, let's scale it down a bit to create the inner part of the bottle. Now, select this edge loop by holding Alt and clicking on the edge. Ensure that the proportional editing tool is turned on. In the drop-down menu, make sure Connected Only is checked. Now press G to grab, and then Z to move it up along the Z-axis. You can scroll your mouse wheel to increase the area of influence, affecting more geometry as you move. Once you're done, hit Alt-Z again to return to solid view. Now select this edge loop here. Press E to extrude and then S to scale it down, creating a more refined shape. I want to show you something important, which I've mentioned in previous videos, but it's worth repeating. If you go to the Ov Overlays menu and check the Face Orientation option, you'll see that all the blue faces are the ones facing outward, while the red faces indicate the normals that are inverted and should not be facing us. Now, hover your mouse over this outer mesh and press L. This will select all of this outer part while excluding the inner geometry. Finally, press H to hide it so you can clearly view the inner mesh. Now we want to flip the inside mesh so that the outer part appears red and the inside is blue. To do this, press A to select everything, then go to Mesh, hover over Normals, and choose Flip. This action will flip the normals of the selected geometry. Next, let's bring back the hidden object. Press Alt-8 to unhide it, and let's turn off the Face Orientation Overlay for clarity. Now switch to Object Mode, and you should see that our object is looking good. Right-click on the object and select Shade Smooth to give it a nice polished look. Now, it's time to model the cover for our perfume bottle. With the same perfume bottle selected, enter Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Select this edge loop here, then press Shift-D to duplicate it. Right-click to snap it back into place, and then hit P and choose Separate by Selection. This action will separate the selected edge loop into a new object. Now hit Tab to go back to Object Mode, and select the newly separated edge loop. Press Tab again to enter Edit Mode. Here, let's delete the bevel modifier that was applied to this edge we just separated. Next, press A to select everything. Now hit E to extrude along the Z-axis, just like this. After extruding, press E again, followed by S to scale it down, and then E again to extrude, followed by S to scale it down once more. Finally, hit Control F and choose Grid Fill to fill in the faces. Now press Ctrl R to add a loop cut and slide it up here. Then add one more loop cut and slide it up to sharpen the top edge. You might notice a slight issue here. Press the backslash key to solo this cover. You can see that this edge is quite sharp compared to the other parts. This issue is likely due to a problem with the normals. To check this, just like we did before, Go to the Overlays panel and enable the Face Orientation checkbox. Here, you'll notice that all the red faces are not oriented correctly and should not be facing us. If you find yourself in this situation, you'll need to flip all these red faces. However, if your normals look fine, you can skip this step. To fix the normals, select all the red faces, 
Then navigate to Mesh, hover over Normals, and choose Flip. This will resolve the sharp edge issue we encountered. Now let's continue modeling. Select this edge, then press E to extrude and S to scale it down. Next, add one more loop cut by pressing Ctrl R and slide it down here to refine the shape further. Now hit the backslash key on your keyboard to bring back the previously hidden objects. Let's switch to object mode and take a look at how our object is shaping up. Once satisfied, left click and choose Shade Smooth to enhance the smoothness of the surface. Next, we need to create the spray tube for the bottle. To do this, select the cover and hit Tab to enter edit mode. Now, select this edge loop, press Shift D to duplicate it, then right click to snap it back in place. Press P and choose Separate by Selection to create a new object from the duplicated edge loop. In object mode, select the newly separated loop, then hit Tab to enter edit mode again. Press A to select everything, and then let's scale it down a bit. Press Alt-Z to enter X-ray mode, which will allow you to see through the geometry more clearly. Now, scale it down slightly and move it down by pressing G followed by Z to bring it down to the desired position. Now press E and then Z to extrude the tube downward. After that, press E again and hit S to scale it down a bit. Next, press E and Z to bring it down once more. Again, press E and S to scale it down further. Finally, press E and Z to bring it down just a tiny bit more. We're encountering an issue here because the face orientation was left on. As you can see, when I press G and then Z, all the objects are moving unexpectedly. So always remember to turn off your face orientation after using it. Now let's press G and Z again to bring it down. Next, press E and then S to scale it down, just like this. Now, press E and Z to bring it down one more time. Repeat this process again, pressing E and Z, and moving it all the way down until we reach the bottom of the spray bottle. Now hit Control and the plush key on your numpad to grow the selection. After that, press P and choose Separate by Selection to isolate this part into its own object. This will make our workflow much easier. Next, hit Tab to switch to Object Mode and select the tube we just separated. Press Tab again to enter Edit Mode. Now, uh, press Ctrl R and scroll your mouse wheel to add a few segments here. Once that's done, select this loop. Make sure to turn on the Proportional Editing tool. You can toggle it on with the O key. Now press G and then X to move it along the X axis, just like this. Next, we need to create a label for the bottle. With the bottle selected, hit Tab to enter Edit Mode. In Face Select Mode, let's select these faces here. Alternatively, uh, you can just select this middle face and then press Ctrl to grow your selection, just like this. Now hit Shift D to duplicate it, and then right click to snap it right back in place. Finally, press P and choose Separate by Selection to create a new object for the label. Now, in object mode, let's select the face we just separated for the label. You might notice that it has some rough shading. To fix this, we need to move it forward just a tiny bit. With the label selected, press G and then Y to grab it along the Y axis. You can also use your arrow keys for fine tuning the movement. I'll hit the down arrow key to nudge it forward just a little and then hit enter to confirm the position. Great, now we have our label perfectly in front of the bottle. Next, let's clean up some modifiers. Select the label and delete the bevel modifier as well as the subdivision surface modifier. With that done, we're finished with modeling our perfume bottle. The next step is to parent all the objects to the bottle itself. To do this, hit Alt-Z to enter X-ray mode, then select all the objects. Hold Shift and select the bottle last. 
you'll notice that the bottle is highlighted in orange, indicating it's the active object. Now press Ctrl P and choose Object, Keep Transform. This way, whenever we move the bottle, all the associated objects will move with it. Now press G and then Z to move the bottle slightly up. Thanks for watching part one of our perfume bottle modeling tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the process and learned some useful techniques along the way. If you're ready to give your model some stunning textures, be sure to check out part two. Just click the link in the description below or on the screen now. Happy blending and see you in the next video.